Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. With the holidays approaching, I wanted to share with you some handmade gift ideas. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a melt and pour soap project that you can easily gift out to friends and family and coworkers. Now, the reason I'm sharing this one with you is because it's an easy project, yet it also is very impressive. So everybody in your life will love it. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make it and also where you can get all the products that I'm using and I'll put the links in the description box. If you want the full recipe plus written tutorial, head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe and many more for just a $5 pledge. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need for this recipe is a suspension base melt and pour soap. So this is different than a regular melt and pour soap. We need it to be suspension based because we're gonna be using some cranberry seeds in part of the soap and we want the cranberry seeds to suspend in the soap. If you use a regular melt and pour soap base, they will either float to the top or sink to the bottom. So don't skip out on this step if you want your cranberry seeds to be suspended all throughout the soap. Um, I got the Stevenson Personal Care brand of melt and pour suspension base soap. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all of this up into little multiple chunks. Okay, now that this is all chopped up into little bits, we need to weigh out half of this soap base into a container. Now, I am working with five pounds of soap today, so I'm gonna be weighing out two and a half pounds of the little chunks into this container here. Okay, there is my two and a half pounds of soap base. And now I need to put it into the microwave and melt it all down. So I'm gonna be doing this nice and slow on probably one minute bursts until the soap gets all melted down. It's really important not to do this part too fast because if you start to melt your soap and it gets too hot, you're gonna ruin your soap base. It'll get scorched and it'll turn it off color and it just won't look as nice. So we're gonna go in one minute to 30 second burst as it gets closer to getting all melted down and I'll bring you back when the soap is melted down. All right, while we're waiting for that soap base to melt down, I'm gonna prepare the additives that are gonna go into the bottom half of this soap. So the first thing that we're using is some cranberry butter. Now you can pick this up from Brambleberry, that's where I got mine, and it's a mixture of shea butter and some other um, skin loving ingredients, but it also is made out of cranberries. You can see the little speckles in there and that's going to show up nicely in the soap. So we're going to be using this in the bottom half of the soap. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. And then also we're going to be adding in some pumpkin extract. You don't have to use pumpkin extract, this is optional. Um, you can use any extract, like oat extract, or carrot extract, or anything else, or you can just leave it out. Um, but I'm gonna be using a little bit of pumpkin extract. Okay, and then I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm also gonna be preparing the fragrance oil and just setting that aside as well. So we are using Cranberry Relish fragrance oil by Nature's Garden. And the reason I'm using this one, first it smells super good. Um, and I really also do like their Cranberry Rhubarb fragrance oil that smells like Cranberry uh, Relish with like top notes of orange um, and kind of that vanilla um, base note. Um, but the cranberry rhubarb, I'm saving for wax melts and candles because it will turn your soap brown. It's got a lot of vanilla. 
the cranberry relish. It is a nice, strong cranberry orange type of fragrance. All right, at this point, it's not all the way melted down, and I've been doing it in about one minute burst for about three minutes, but at this time, I wanna take it out and add in the shea butter, um, the cranberry butter that has a lot of shea butter in it, I should say. I didn't wanna add it in at first because I didn't want the shea butter to get too hot, um, but now that it's melted down quite a bit, we're gonna go ahead and put that in there and just start stirring it, and then we're gonna put it back in the microwave um, at 15 second to 30 second burst until everything's melted down. Be right back. Okay, we are all the way melted down. Now, if you've never used the suspension based melt and pour soap before, you're gonna notice it's a, a bit different. It's more viscous and it sets up rather quickly. So. You want to have your um, ingredients prepped and ready to go, including um, some rubbing alcohol to kind of keep it from forming a skin. See on my spoon, it's already kind of forming a skin just from me stirring. So now that we're melted down, we're going to go ahead and add in some color. And I am using Merlot Sparkle Mica from Brambleberry. And it's just a nice cranberry um, color. And I'm not going to use that much. Uh, I want it to be kind of an opaque cranberry color and not too see-through, but I also don't want it super dark. Yeah, I like this color for cranberry uh, fragrances and it does seem to disperse rather nicely um, into melt and pour soap, especially if you have some rubbing alcohol available. And then I'm gonna be adding also into this my oat extract. And my fragrance. I'm gonna give it a good stir. Make sure everything's combined. is a really nice festive fragrance. Um, I've used it in cold process soap as well and it sticks nicely. Okay, just making sure there are no mica chunks in there and I know you can disperse this and you can disperse your mica into um, rubbing alcohol first but I just prefer to put it right into the container. Okay, we are ready to go ahead and pour the first half into the mold. So I'm using the five pound wooden mold from Brambleberry with the silicone liner. And then I have a bottom a, a piece from another mold, it's about an inch, that I'm gonna put underneath this side so that we get a tilted diagonal layer effect. So first, I'm just gonna spray down my mold. This will help with break up any surface tension and it will help also for the soap to spread across the bottom evenly. Okay. And then I'm just gonna pour into the mold Okay, and I'm gonna spritz this down. That breaks up all the little bubbles that are in there. And then we're gonna wait for this to set up a bit before we start melting down the second half of this soap. So we want this to kind of start forming a little bit of a skin on top before we start melting down the other half. So I'll bring you right back when we're ready to do that. All right, so I wanted to just kind of show you what this looks like before I start melting down the other half of the soap. So it's kind of hard for the camera to pick up, but really you just want your soap to start forming um, a little bit of a skin 
on the top of it. And you don't want your soap to be completely all the way set up when you go to pour that second layer. That's the trickiest part of this project. Um, if you are layering the soap, you do want to make sure that it is set up enough that your hot soap won't break through this layer, but also that the soap down here is not all the way set up. If it is, you're gonna risk those layers not adhering or bonding all the way together and then coming apart um, when you cut the soap. So I just wanna show you with a spoon, if I touch it, see how it's got a skin on it, but you can still kinda of see the soap underneath moving. That's the perfect time to start warming up your soap. So I'm gonna bring you back when the other half of the soap is completely melted down. Okay, everything is now all the way melted down for the second half of the soap. And what I'm gonna be doing is adding in my color first. So this is just a little titanium dioxide dispersed in water. Um, I want this to be white um, backdrop against the cranberry seeds that we're gonna be adding in. So by the way, you don't have to buy um, white melt and pour soap base, um, which tends to be a little bit more expensive. You can, all it is is um, soap base with titanium dioxide. So you can add that yourself and save a little bit of extra money. So there's that. And then I'm gonna be adding in my oat extract. I'm sorry, my pumpkin extract, my fragrance oil. I'm gonna give that a good mix. So pumpkin extract is really good for the skin. It's got alpha hydroxy acids and vitamins like A. Okay, so this is gonna be quite a luxurious melt and pour soap. It's gonna have the exfoliants in the top half and it's gonna have the cranberry butter um, in the bottom half and it's gonna have that beautiful pumpkin extract throughout the whole soap so overall just a really nice melt and pour project and a great gift okay so then we're just gonna add in a few teaspoons of the cranberry seeds these I also got at Brambleberry now it's important that you just start with one to two teaspoons here because you can overdo it with your seeds and you can get um, too many in there and then it will be too rough of a soap. So I just did about a teaspoon per pound. And I think that's perfectly suspended how I want. Don't want any more than that. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep stirring this a little bit just to make sure that it's cool enough to pour onto the first half and also just to make sure my cranberry seeds will fully suspend. Um, I've used this base before with, and I'll probably show this to you one day, one day soon here too, but I've used this base before with calendula petals and it's just suspended super nicely. Okay. I'm gonna take a quick temperature read. And I'm continuing to stir because I don't want a skin to form on top. And uh, I want this to cool down. Okay. So if you get bubbles, you can just use a little rubbing alcohol. And this will look like a nice, uh, fun and festive soap as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the soap back, the soap mold back over here. Now you're gonna see it, it is not all the way set up, but I wanna take it off that tilt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And it should be set up enough that it's not breaking up. You know, you're still gonna have that nice diagonal. I'm spraying it down with rubbing alcohol to help with the surface tension and help the soap spread evenly. And then I'm just slowly gonna start to pour, see if I can do it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna pour a little bit 
to make sure I'm not going to be breaking through that surface. I'm going to stop right there and give this a little spritz. And I'm going to let this set up for several hours to overnight. And when I bring you back, I'm going to show you um, how to cut it, what it looks like. And I'm going to give you some gift wrapping ideas. Okay, stay tuned. All right, everybody, we're back to go ahead and cut the soap. So this is a soap cutter for melt and pour soap. Um, these are kind of expensive. You do not have to cut your soap with this. You can just use a sharp knife. But I'll put the link um, in the description box of where I purchased this because a regular soap cutter, you can't cut melt and pour soap with it. It'll break your wires. So there's how they turned out. They're just really nice looking. They smell super good. Actually, I should probably flip this soap so in case any of those cranberry seeds, I don't want to drag, leave drag marks. Okay. Getting a little bit crooked here. Okay. I'm gonna bring you back when these are all cut and I'm gonna give you some ideas for how to wrap these. Okay, so I have a few different gift wrapping suggestions here for you. If you're gonna be gifting these around the holiday season, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're wrapping your melt and pour soap bars in some sort of cling wrap or um, shrink wrap film. They do have a tendency to attract moisture um, and they will sweat if you don't do this. So make sure you do this first. And then I picked a few different types of paper here. Um, one is just this decorative roll of, um, I think it's like a wallpaper type paper or like a shelf liner type paper. And I picked this roll, little roll up at Joann's. And then I have another roll of brown craft paper. So I've just cut these into little squares. Now I am the world's worst present wrapper, but I'm gonna do my best to show you some different wrapping techniques. Okay, so there they are. They're all kind of wrapped up. And then we're just gonna do some final little touches. So on this one, um, I'm just going to put my logo stamp on here. Of course, you could use any type of stamp you like. Christmas trees would be cute or, you know, snowflakes, a white snowflake would be really cute. I'm just using my stamp with some green ink and I'm actually not sure how well the green is going to show through because um, I use black ink on this one all the time and I'm just going to stamp. There we go. There's one. I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna just use some um, black and white baker's twine to just kind of decorate this. Um, and just make it look nice and personalized. tying a little bow. And 
there you go. And I'm just gonna trim these up. And there's the first way. All nice and neat, tied up, perfectly giftable. In fact, we could make that bow just a little bit smaller. And you could even put a little handmade um, tag if you wanted to. You could put a little handmade tag to hang off of here, but that's one way that you can wrap it. And it just looks really cute and it's so personal and handmade. So then there's the stamped one and you can add, I thought I brought in, oh, I have some pink Baker's twine, but that doesn't really go with the green. Um, or you, I just have some regular colored twine here. And you can just kind of do the same, same thing. So around um, the holidays, always on the last day before Christmas break at my kids' school, we always gift holiday soaps to all the teachers and principal and staff. And I think it's at this point come, become a bit of a tradition and they, they really do like it. Okay. And that's way number two, everybody. And you could even leave the string off of this one too if you just wanted to keep it like that. Um, but anyway, that's how I would wrap them if I was gonna be gifting them. And that's how you do it. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to give me a comment, a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends. Catch you on the next video. Bye.